Yo, 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 yo. What's up, all you burner stoners and potheads? This is Weedman420 with the Weedman420 Chronicles. How are all you v vipers doing out there? Mrs. Weedman. Mr. Weedman. How the hell are you? I will be much better in about five minutes. Because <laughs> you need to get high. Yeah. High, high. I'm going to light this beauty up, <laughs> and I'm going to be a whole new person. Before we start smoking, hopefully mm -hmm. everybody out there smoking some big fat joints, uh, doinks while you're listening to the show. Uh, but besides that, uh, episode 135 got screwed up on Spotify. Uh, we try to fix it. If it's not fixed, you can listen to it on YouTube or any other platform. So let us know if it is fixed on Spotify. Uh, on my end, it's not, but check us out on YouTube or any other platform, episode 135. So sorry about that, everybody. But here we go. Mrs. Wee Man. Yeah. Go ahead and light this joint up. And I'm going to talk about this because I'm really excited. A friend of the show's, his name is Sam. We've talked about him many times. He actually won the pumpkin bog contest and a couple other things. Uh, gave us uh, some great CBD strain. And in this strain, which we haven't even smoked yet, I've been saving it for the show. This is called o Auto Fuel and Strawberry Goo. And cannot find any information about the two strains together but auto fuel is basically is is an indica dominant strain and it could be used in and outdoors uh good for uh relaxation mellowness just uh anxiety so super stoked about about smoking this and then the strawberry goo is a sativa strain but its effects are relaxing drowsy and euphoric Re recommended for evening use to relieve stress and insomnia the aroma of strawberry goo is earthy and sweet, tasting uh, of tart blueberries. But here's the deal. We got uh, – we saw our friend Briggs. He's the owner of Split Society, and he gave us a bunch of uh, uh, cones, and he gave me a couple of rose cones that he's now selling. One of them he filled with a bunch of great weed, and but then he put a bunch of keef on it, and I did not want to smoke it on the show only because it's a monster doink. Like, monster doink. And for me and Mrs. Weeman, we're not going to smoke that whole thing during the show. So I want to share that with friends. So I filled it up with our friend Sam's strain that he gave me, and which is auto fuel and strawberry goo, which is 25% THC and 2% CBD. And that took a lot of fucking weed to fill that, that rose cone up. Like, a lot. So this is our first time smoking out of a rose cone. <laughs> and, and 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 how you doing there? I'm doing great. And I do have to say, Sam, <laughs> thank you for this strain, Briggs. Thank you for for Split Society for giving us the rose cone. But I gotta say, Sam, this strain you gave me was the sticky, dicky, icky. It like like my I, I I touched it just to feel it, and my fingers were sticking together. It clogged up my fucking uh, my grinder, and my scissors were really sticky. I probably gotta scrape some off and made some scissor hash. That's how sticky his this weed is. So. I can't wait to smoke it. Pass that joint over. Here you go. Different smoking it from the rose petal. Yeah. Yeah, it burns differently. It looks like it burns kind of slow. Yeah, pretty nice. And did the strain have a lot of, is it a diesel strain? No. What no. am I tasting? Lemony or minty or peppery maybe? Like my mouth feels tingly. It's auto fuel and strawberry goo. I read about them. Yummy. <laughs> pretty good. Let's see how it... How it uh, Elevates my brain. Really different. It's different. Different taste. It's a different taste, I think, because of the, the rose. The wrap. One hundred percent. Yeah. One hundred percent. I'm tasting floral. Yeah. Well, my taste buds, because of my medication, as I've mentioned before, aren't great. They're just very hit or miss. Um, so I can't identify the taste quite right. But definitely a different smoke with the rose petal. Mm -hmm. But it burns very nicely. Yeah. And I stuffed that joint really nice too. But it took a lot of weed. <laughs> so. We watched a movie that we both liked very much. It's it's on uh, uh, some of the streaming platform. Uh, but we watched You People with super Eddie Murphy. Cute. Yes, super good. With Eddie Murphy, who I fucking love. have loved him since I was fucking eight years old. I mean, he's amazing in everything I've ever seen. Com comedies, movies, everything. Uh, Julia. Uh, Louis Dreyfus. J Louis Dreyfus, thank you. It always gets me stumbled on, with her name. Mm -hmm. uh, and Jonah Hill, and I can't remember every, everybody else's name, so I apologize. But You People was a good movie. Super duper cute. You teared up and cried like, a little bit. It's a comedy, love story, culture. It's all these different things, lifestyle, culture. It's just, it's it's fun. It's a Jonah Hill, so there's some silliness in it. Yeah. Um, but there's a good, at the core of it, there's a really good story. Really good story. And too. good, like... 
Yeah, it's just good. Yes. It's good. But it's I, sad at the end. Sad but good. Like in a good way. Yeah, in a good way. It was cheerful at the end. So I I it's highly sweet. suggest getting baked and watching it, especially Eddie Murphy. He's just so good. <laughs> he's mm -hmm. awesome. <laughs> he doesn't look like he's aged a bit. Still looks like he's in his 30s. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, you people. And then we had we went to two events, we cannabis did. events. We did. A lot of fun. There's, you know, um, now I don't, it's like a beta program, but yeah, Eventbrite now has a an event high, H-I. <laughs> and it's a, it's a beta test. Um, but it's for maybe larger cities that have cannabis events popping up and the host can post the uh, information on there. So anyway, um, check that out. It's it's a source of some things. But there have just been more and more um, groups of people, uh, content, pe uh, people that do uh, social media content and have media companies and marketing companies are just putting these events together. And they're really cool. So we went to, you know, and it's our first time going. Some of them have already happened maybe once or twice in the area. So there are return people who now already know what the vibe is and how things flow. We don't, right? So we went to the first one, and that was Profesh Sesh. Well, that's hard to say when you're stoned. <laughs> and Why do you think it, I'm always I know, fucking, right? I couldn't even correct me for like two weeks <laughs> on it. I'm always big yeah. trying to pronounce it. <laughs> so that was a business networking event. Um, a very open, friendly, great vibe. It was in a bar, so they had to be very careful. You know, you don't want to step on the toes of the bar owner and bring cannabis in there, and then they lose their liquor license. So they had what's called the Sesh Bus, and it's an old, uh, like, it's an old, like, Greyhound bus, and it's decked out kind of vibey, like 1970s motif, and inside you can smoke weed. And so you could step out of the bar and go smoke weed outside and then come back in. And they had Chiba Hut sandwiches and they had it was a bar. So you could order cocktails. Um, I think they had can of cocktails on the menu, maybe. I don't know. I, I don't know about it. that. I don't know. But anyway, there were some really good things. There were a couple um, dispensaries representing there and giving samples um, of some edibles. It was just really cool. Really great um, vibe. Uh, everybody that w was there was just really open to networking and a lot. It was just fun. It was brainstorming, but it was social. It was, it was, we it was showed great. up. Yeah, it was great. Then the next one we went to is called Brunch of Stoners. That was fucking awesome. Brunch of Stoners is just that. It was a awesome. brunch and everyone was there getting stoned. The best Pop Tart I've ever had. It was so cool. Homemade Pop Tart. Yeah. Oh. So you so pay for your ticket. And you went to this anonymous spot, and you got the the address shortly before the event. And uh, when you get checked in, you get a little card, and it tells you all the different stations that you can visit. And then each of the stations will punch a hole in your card to say that you've been there, and you can visit some more than once. So there was a flower station where they had um, the big... Uh, gravity bong. Gravity bong. And then... Which was like amazing. Oh, we got. And they had the Zenco. Yep. And then there was a dab bar and a concentrate bar. So they everything they had was live resin. And you had same with it the the flower bar. You had a multiple varieties of nice hybrid indica, sativa. There was a whole menu. Yeah. And you but could nice, pick your yeah. nice like on an easel like really yeah. well done. Yeah, it was really nice. Yes. Very organized. Everybody that was there uh, working had the brunch of stoner shirts on, so it didn't matter what brand or who you were representing or the glass. You were there to represent Brunch of Stoners. It's awesome. Super cool. It's awesome. Um, so very subtle branding and marketing happening. Yes. It was just really cool. It was a completely social event. So you could go to these stations, and then they were cooking brunch in the back of the, the, the space. There was an open kitchen, and they prepared this whole breakfast buffet. Uh, and then again, Chiba Hut sandwiches oh. were there. They had a popcorn bar. Everything Make was your own All popcorn. the food. We got a little bit of everything. They had tonic was there, which yep. is uh, an infu a concentrate infusion beverage and, and you them. mix it you it's a mixer so you make mocktails yeah they're making a bunch um, of mocktails and, and they you ask could, you what your dose you, what want. your you dose want five is. or ten yeah. and that's all they capped it at and you get it was two nice. tickets for that yep. there were uh board games table games all over the place so you could play pegboard you could play jenga it was really cool and people were just chilling out so it was really cool because there was absolutely no alcohol none and so it was it, 
just literally Mellow. that. It was a cannabis event. Everyone was there to smoke cannabis and enjoy the morning. And people were fucking baked. And so... You and I especially. Yeah, like in the beginning, <laughs> like it was everybody like getting excited. It's fun. You're making your way around the room. You're smoking a lot. You're smoking a lot. You're smoking a lot. They feed you. You have a couple drinks. Now the edibles kicked in. You might go back to smoke some more. And now it's like an hour and a half into the event. It was like almost like you were in a library. <laughs> it was so cool. People were like sinking into the furniture. And, and the like, music level was music perfect. Music was perfect. They could put another speaker on the other side. Yeah. But it was still nice. Everybody's just like in these music. like deep conversations yeah. or no or, conversations. Or laughs. We were, were just laughing giggling. our ass off. Yeah, we were laughing our ass off. Oh my off. God. It was fantastic. Yeah. It was really fun. No and it was it was arguing, no business. It was no, no business. Just it was just straight pure up. social. Yeah. Just chill. Do what you do. Do your thing. Yeah. It was so fun. And a really good age range and yeah. variety of people. It was pretty fun. We were back. I, I think we were like. We were at the, uh, the yeah. old end of it. Yes. We and were. there weren't very many of us. Yes. <laughs> there weren't. There but weren't. it was nice. But it was nice. I didn't feel out of place. I didn't Not feel like, you no. know, the old people. We said hello to a bunch of people as we walked by. Yeah. Hi, how you doing? How you doing? Never got into a lot of conversation. But in right. line waiting for food, we'd say hello to somebody. How you doing? You know, we were trying to be socially friend friendly. Because we want to just see what this was all just about. Just to see how, yeah. how and, this all And works. we saw some people there that were at the, the profess, profess <laughs> sesh. Yes. Um, we saw them there having fun, too. So it was great. The one girl there told me about the Chiba Hut sandwich. Yeah, which ones to pick? I got the mushroom chicken with cream sauce, like a ranch cream sauce on a soft. Oh, my God. That was the last thing I ate. And I should have ate that first because I was so full. <laughs> when I, I forced. The pastries were so good. Yeah, I, so here's how it went. My food thing. The vegan soup. There was a the vegan, vegan casserole. The fucking egg casserole. The freaking thing was amazing. was fucking delicious. And the guy, it was funny. We were all, I, we were high. We were very high. We were in that line for food. You know me. I yeah. never really eat when I'm that high. But I was like, I got to eat now. The line was just starting. So we got on first. <laughs> and the one kid was so baked. He He's trying to put. Oh, the, oh he was God. trying to put the cellophane <laughs> on around the fucking around his the bowl, around the, the bowl. He's like, for the waffle bag. You know when cellophane like gets a wind gust and it kind of like oh my fucking God, it kept sticks. Rolling and he's, up. Like, he's like, no, because <laughs> it would fold in, and you have to like try to unfold it because he didn't want to waste. And then all of a sudden he got the first one. He's like, ah. Well, and the bowl was wide enough Very that he wide. had to he had to run yeah. two sheets side by side. <laughs> oh my gosh! So it, then, they kept rumpling up. So then we get to the part with the hysterical. egg. Yeah. And there's one guy. That says he's talking oh in tongues God. for a second. I think we were either high or he was talking in tongues. And he goes, I'm sorry about the vegan cheese. And I'm like, you should be. And the chef is standing <laughs> right, right next to him. And, I, and, and I he's kind of like, hey, dude. And I said, you should be. And he start, he smiled. And then, I, and then the chef goes, you will never know this is vegan cheese in here. I'm like, all right. Yeah, you know what? Yeah, I yeah. said, well, is that sausage? He goes, no, it's vegan sausage. I'm like, okay, I've had vegan sausage before. It's fine. Right. And it was like a potato cheese casserole with yes, sausage it was, and bell pepper. So it was fucking. Mm, so was I won't even tell you how good it is yet because I was still just staring it down. And then we got our <laughs> pop tarts and we got fucking this cream puff pastry. But the pop, I should have grabbed two fucking pop tarts, but I didn't feel greedy. Yeah, they were fucking. That would have been greedy. I all right. So I ate half of that first, mm -hmm. the pop tart, the homemade pop tart, and I saved the rest. And I went. I said, all right, I'm gonna dive into these fucking vegan eggs. Right. <laughs> so I dived into these vegan eggs and I took a bite and I looked over at you and I'm like, all right, I'm not even going to say anything yet. I took another bite and I'm like, I said, I looked over at you and I said, you would never know yeah. that this was fucking. We were vegan both devouring cheese. it. We had this whole but plate of food. You didn't eat the sausage and, we, and I ate the sausage yeah, 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 and I thought it was sausage. great. Cause it tasted almost like meat, so but I and I don't even want to know what's in it. No one mm -hmm. even if it's tough because I just put in my head it's meat because it had a meat taste because mm -hmm. the spices they put in there and you didn't eat yours and I was like oh god this is great she doesn't <laughs> like it I'm gonna fucking nail like four or five more pieces and I start picking off of your plate and then I fucking went back to the fucking pop tart and mm -hmm. ate that. <laughs> and I'm watching you all along to see if you were going to eat your Pop Tart, and you finally did. And I'm like, what's in it? You're like, lemon. I'm like, good. Yeah. Yeah, I don't even watch yours. Oh, it was then. like lemon curd. I had, it was so I good. had strawberry. Mm. Yeah. That would be and it was too. fire. And I should have grabbed two because <laughs> it would have fucked me up. So, <laughs> but it was fun. It was a great event. And, great. and, and we had a lot of laughs. But the one thing I did when we were sitting on the, uh, on the stools, um, we were sitting on the stools. And I said to you, I said, 20 years ago, 25 years ago, you never would see this. No. 
you know, not even ten years. But ago. I'm just saying, oh, I'm leading up to that. So, but you were th- thinking, like, wouldn't this be cool? Like, we used to get together with my buddies and barbecue and smoke, and it was great. But you're still doing it in the, your backyard, kind of hiding, mm-hmm. you know, or you'd go in the house because you don't want your neighbors seeing what you were right. doing. It sucks. But you go to this, and it's just burner stoners and potheads, and just pe- people just hanging. Just fucking dabbing, smoking. You could bring your own stuff. People were rolling joints like fucking crazy. Mm-hmm. There was joints being passed around. There was one cloud of fucking smoke. Yeah, there I was, was. I think the contact high too. There was so much yeah. smoking, and they finally opened the windows up. But well done, fun, just enjoyable to watch people smoke in peace and enjoy life, and and not have a care in the world, but it was just super to sweet. just to have a good time and relax. Mm-hmm. It was no, you couldn't. There was no tension. In that place at all. Yeah, it was so nice. It was fucking great. So well done. You got anything else to say about that? Mm Mm-mm. No? I'm really high. Oh, Sam? Well done, my friend. Yeah. I am fucking baked. Me too. Really baked. And Mm -hmm. you're going first. (laughs) (laughs) Well, let's see how this goes, folks. So let's talk about about this firefighter winning the case. He's winning. Well, oh, boy. You want me to do it? No, I got it. You got it? Yep. I could talk a little more. I got it. Nope, nope, nope. You sure? Yep, 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 All right. yep, yep. Okay. Fired for cannabis. Oh, <laughs> I might get the giggles. This firefighter is back on the job after winning landmark case. Okay. Sam Riches. We're going to start now. This is the official first episode of us announcing the author and the title place this was printed. Right. So. That was the title. <laughs> oh my gosh. I am so high. You want me to go? No, no, no. No, I got it. Uh, I got it. Sure. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> Sam Riches, the growth op.com. It was during oral arguments that attorney David Holland got a sense that Scott Martin, an Air Force veteran and firefighter who is terminated for medical cannabis use, would soon be back on the job. Holland represented Martin in his lawsuit against the city of Buffalo and the Buffalo Fire Department. Martin was seeking full reinstatement and to be reassigned back to his original rank and platoon after being fired in December 2020. For nearly 12 years, Martin had worked as an EMT and firefighter for the city, and he was eventually assigned to a truck and platoon that covered his childhood neighborhood. It was important for him to return to that same area. I had always wanted to be a firefighter. That's my purpose in life, Martin told the growth op last year. And then, just to lose everything like that, it was a shock. But I've been working through it, and I'm doing better every day. Nearly two years to the date he was fired, Martin returned to work. In December, Martin and the city of Buffalo reached a settlement on his civil claims seeking to enforce his rights as a certified and registered medical marijuana patient under New York's Compassionate Care Act, the CCA. A 2014 law that allows state residents to purchase and possess cannabis-based products under very limited medical circumstances. Just days before Christmas in 2020, Martin was suspended under the terms of a 2011 collective bargaining agreement after he tested positive for cannabis. Two months later, as he continued his use of medical cannabis, he again tested positive, and he was fired. Holland said the case is the first of its kind in the U.S. to really take on collective bargaining as a whole when it comes to the rights of medical patients. In Martin's case, Holland said the collective bargaining agreement was not caught up with changes in law, and similar situations are playing out across the rest of the United States. The last version was written before the medical marijuana law passed in New York, Holland told the growth op in a video call. But then, and the city admitted this surprisingly, they opted to continue their drug testing policy and basically a prohibition on marijuana, whether medical or otherwise. Holland said that during the course of the case, it was revealed that the city considered adding an exemption for medical cannabis patients in 2018, but decided against it unless they received concessions in other areas. He says that while certain rights can be bargained away, such as what is said within the confines of a workplace or on social media after work hours, disability status is not one of them. 
You can't bargain away somebody's protected rights that are given, he says. The union never really thought about it in the context of people like Scott. Martin qualified as a registered medical consumer due to a back injury that didn't respond well to a variety of treatments, including opioids, nerve blockers, and x-ray-assisted spinal injections. He knew he would test positive for cannabis and provided his employer with his prescription before the results came in. Holland says, despite Martin's legal status as a qualified patient, the city of Buffalo continued to treat cannabis as if it were legal, illegal. When you read New York's medical law, that thing is exactly what it's designed to change, he says. It's designed to protect people that do use it as medicine, as Scott does. Now back on the job, Martin says he's glad the case is over and things are slowly returning to normal. I'm back to doing what I love to do, he says. It'll get back to normal. It's not there yet, but it'll get there. He's continuing his use of medical cannabis, and after spending much of his time away from his job on his garden, he's now looking forward to growing a few cannabis plants on his own. He consumes cannabis after work in the evenings and has found relief after identifying the cultivars and products that work for him. He says he never intended to be a spokesperson for other people. He was fighting for his own rights, but he doesn't, get, he doesn't back down once challenged. That's just the type of person I am, he says. He admits, though, it was strange to have his personal health issues aired on nationally and to receive media attention from across the continent. It had to be someone, I guess. It's weird, though, to think about it at times and have stories written about me and see myself on TV. But someone had to do it, so it might as well be me. Holland serves as the executive and legal director for the New York State Affiliate of the National Organization for the Reform on Marijuana Laws, or NORML. He is also a pro bono legal advisor to The Last Prisoner Project, which seeks clemency and habeas corpus relief for prisoners of the war on drugs. He didn't need much convincing to take on Martin's case. When Scott called me, it just seemed so unfair what had happened to him, given the rights that medical patients have, he says. Here's a guy who fought for his country, helps to fight the lives for the lives of people in Buffalo. What can you say except for God bless you? You're out there doing it for your fellow citizens, he says. And then he gets terminated for what is not even a bad plant, but is an effective medicine. Holland's background served him well during oral arguments when he says he and the city of Buffalo's attorney went back and forth in front of a judge for nearly an hour and a half. I found myself in a position that was more teaching than arguing, he says. I was able to educate the judge on what the laws and, pro and protections are and why you shouldn't just believe a collective bargaining agreement should be in control. There's been an evolution of the law that nobody's really challenged before. So, so Scott was the first to really challenge it in a way that nobody else in the country had. He says the city's arguments appealed to emotion, to try and get a knee-jerk reaction, a stance that he says is well past dated at this point. The national studies that have been done in, mil in multiple countries where legalization or otherwise medical cannabis has been allowed shows that it isn't a great risk and it's not a great harm and that it doesn't make you negligent or incapable of doing your job when used responsibly, he says. He adds that he believes the judge started to become swayed as they heard Holland's argument, all but also as the city, which was arguing the case get dismissed, resorted to personal attacks on Martin's character. I had no doubt that Scott was going to get all the relief he asked for, and that's why I think they changed and decided to settle it pretty quickly thereafter, Holland says. They knew the writing was on the wall. After nearly two years, Martin was resorted to the same rank, seniority, salary, and benefits that he held immediately before he was suspended. He also received an undisclosed cash settlement. Beyond that, the city and fire department now must recognize Martin's status and right as a registered medical marijuana patient. He got everything he asked for, Holland says. The war is over. Holland believes the case will now be the standard by which similar cases get evaluated going forward in New York. So, yeah, 
It's pretty. Before funny. I say anything about this, yeah, I'm so glad you went first. Oh. <laughs> Did I even make sense? Yeah, hundred percent. Okay, good. Because I was fucking faded fast, Sam. Man, you <laughs> fucked me up, bro. I, I fucking, feel all right. Now. I feel good, man. But I'm fucking. <laughs> I want to go fucking lay in the bed. <laughs> That's how good this weed is. <laughs> but I posted this article uh, on 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 Insta. Just because it was a powerful article, it's a win for cannabis. But not only it's a win for Scott, mm -hmm. but it's also a win for fucking cannabis. Yeah. It's a win for medical cannabis, and it's a win because he's a firefighter first, mm -hmm. you know, saving lives. But he's also out there saving other people's lives too, who now can fight for this law. Right. It's amazing. It's pretty. Cool. Fight for your fucking right. Free that fucking plant. Mm -hmm. uh, legalizing cannabis doesn't raise drug alcohol abuse study finds. On Monday, January 30th, living in the U.S. state where recreational weed is legal does not appear to increase the average adult's risk of succumbing to reefer madness, a new study Twins has determined. An adult living in legal state is not more likely to develop any sort of substance abuse disorder than their twins residing in the state where cannabis remains outlawed, researchers found. They also aren't more likely to break the law or have problems with their mental health, relationships, works, finances, friendships, or standing in the community, according to the report published recently, recently in the Journal of Psychological Medicine. We found mostly a lot of nothing, which I think personally is interesting, said researcher Stephanie Zeller. We found, I would find that fucking interesting too, you found a lot of nothing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a postdoctoral researcher with the University of Helensky in Finland. I think this is a case where we don't find much is actually more interesting maybe than finding a bunch of results. For the study, Zellers and her colleagues analyzed more than 4,000 twins who have been participating in long-term studies conducted by research teams at the University of Minnesota and the University of Colorado. It's not like they did, like, two twins. Right. 4,000. That's a lot. That's a lot of fucking twins. I didn't even realize there was that many twins out there. <laughs> <laughs> Just get it. That is a lot of twins. Yeah. They found 240 twin pairs where one twin lives in the state with legal weed and the other lives in the state where it's still banned. There are 21 U.S. states that have legalized, we know this, recreational cannabis. Twin studies are valuable because they share the same upbringing. And in the case of identical twins, the same gene, said Zellers, who began the research as a graduate student at the University of Colorado Boulder. There's a lot of things that could explain why one person is behaving one way, or why people are one state behave one way compared to another, Zeller said. But with twins, we are able to rule out so many of those alternatives, not everything, but a lot of them. Not surprisingly, researchers found that adult twin living in legal states was more likely to partake in weed than their sibling in a state which, uh, where token can be get them busted. That was kind of obvious, Zeller said. Yes, people can legally buy cannabis. They're going to use it more. However, a twin in a legal state was slightly less to develop a drinking problem, Zeller said. That's possibly due to the substitution effect that they use weed instead of alcohol to unwind. A twin in a state with legal weed also was less likely to drink in situations they could be physically hazardous, such as drinking and driving, Zeller said. You're combining drinking with something that could physically be unsafe, Zeller said. The residents of legal states do that less with the interesting and maybe something a little unexpected. Cannabis has long been considered a gateway drug to more ad addictive substances, but the researchers found no evidence of that. True. We asked in the last 12 months, have you tried or used heroin, prescription opiates, cocaine, methamphetamines, hallucinogens, kind of, uh, of the whole 11 of the 12 categories of illicit drugs, Zeller said. And there's no difference there. People living in the state with legal cannabis... They're not necessarily transi transitioning t on to more illicit drugs. Further, twins in states with legal weed aren't more susceptible to mental or emotional problems, financial woes, unemployment, or relationship problems, the study reports. Hmm. I would like to see this be a reassuring result for public policy, at least with the respect to psychological well-being, Zeller said. Legalization really isn't causing great psychological harms. Linda Richer, Vice President of Prevention Research and Analysis for the Partnership to End Addiction, remains skeptical regarding the safety of recreational cannabis, even though the uh, analysis were rigorous and the descriptions of the results within the normal article were measured and appropriate, she said. That's because the study focused on adults rather than teens. 
Richter said. The concern sounding cannabis legalization from much of the public health community primarily centers on young people, adolescents, and early adults who are more vulnerable to substance uses and its consequences since they are still undergoing significant brain development and are highly susceptible to increased normalization of an access to addictive substances that come with legalization and commercial commercialization of cannabis, Richter said. In youth samples, a growing body of research is pointing to a broad range of detrimental effects of legalization on youth, including higher rates of cannabis use. Cannabis use disorder driving under the influence other substances used in mental health disorders, Richter said. Zellers who also acknowledged that her study doesn't consider how legal cannabis might impact higher risk people who use weed frequently. The adult twins in the report tend to use maybe a few times a month at most, she said. I think we're approaching legalization from the question of substance abuse for the average low using person. We're not seeing harms, Zeller said. I think that's important to know. So for more information, you go to the U.S. National Institute of Drug Abuse. It has more about cannabis. Um, So this was written by uh, Health Day. I found it on U.S. News. Hmm. So. So, pretty dope. Pretty good. Right? Yeah. That was a fucking huge article. (laughs) You baked. (laughs) But. I followed. I lost it I know, but but there was some really, really good facts in that fucking article that did a lot. I think, man, I think we, we all know we've been duped by the drug on war and all that stuff. I mean, I use cannabis every day, but I don't use cannabis because I'm addicted to it because I don't smoke it during the day. I don't smoke it. I smoke it at night, probably five days of the week. When I come home, I smoke a joint, fucking smoke eat an edible before I go to bed, smoke another joint, I'm good. It's like someone coming home having a beer or two while they're watching TV. Mm-hmm. Right? Right. But during the day, I don't smoke. Right. I, I, I mean, it's a medicine to me. I don't need to medicate all day long. You know, I medicate at night. On the weekends, I might medicate a little bit during the day, but not much. But I medicate at night because it suits me well, you know? Mm-hmm. So you're stoned. Stony baloney. Stony baloney. Uh, that's man. me over here. So this is a good one. Yep. About truckers. Yeah. Leaving. Crazy. Workforce. Yep. Tens of thousands of commercial truckers are leaving the workforce over outdated marijuana testing requirements. Uh, This was an article by uh, Normal, and it was posted just this past January. I forgot the author's name. (laughs) All right. Creating new habits. All right. Uh, Over 40,000 commercially licensed truck drivers failed federally mandated drug screens for marijuana in 2022, and many did not apply to return to work, according to statistics compiled by the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration's Drug and Alcohol Clearinghouse, a branch of the U.S. Department of Transportation. Federal law mandates that commercially licensed drivers must randomly undergo marijuana urinalysis testing, which detects the presence of the inert carboxy THC metabolite. The non-psychoactive metabolite is detectable in subjects' urine for weeks or even months following exposure. According to a report from the U.S. Department of Justice, the detection of this metabolite only indicates that a particular substance is present in the test subject test subjects body tissue it does not indicate abuse or addiction recency frequency amount of use or impairment normal's deputy director paul armentano said the transportation department's reliance uh on this out reliance on this outdated technology and upon these discriminatory policies is out of step with reality and is directly contributing to the trucking shortage crisis. Normal has long called for the use of performance testing technology rather than drug detection technology to determine whether someone may be impaired while at work. Armentano added, suspicionless marijuana testing in the workplace is not now, nor has it ever been an evidence-based policy. Rather, this discriminatory practice is a holdover from the climate of the 
1980s war on drugs. But times have changed, attitudes have changed, and in many places the marijuana laws have changed. It's time for new workplace policies to adapt to this new reality and to cease punishing employees for activities they engage in during their off hours that, pay, that pose no workplace safety threat. Since 2020, over 100,000 truck drivers have tested positive for past exposure to marijuana. About 60,000 additional drivers have tested positive for other substances. Those who fail their tests are required to enter a return-to-work program, which includes passing a drug test in order to have their license reinstated. However, only one quarter of those who drug test failures have done so. Only about one quarter of those with drug test failures have done so, resulting in driver shortages and supply chain issues. Last year, Republican Earl Blumenauer sent a letter to the Transportation Department calling on the agency to amend policies that penalize commercially licensed drivers who consume cannabis while away from the job. It stated, Your department's zero-tolerance policy sweeps up drivers who were impaired, drivers who have not used cannabis for weeks or even months, and drivers who have used federally legal CBD oils. Blanket disqualifications are unjust, unfair, and cause widespread economic and social damage. Thousands of driving positions are unfilled, compounding our supply chain woes. Penalizing safe drivers who comply with state cannabis laws harms both the drivers and the supply chain they support. In March, the U.S. Department of Trans Transportation proposed changes to existing federal drug testing guidelines that would allow for the use of oral fluid testing as an alternative to urolysis for those working in the transportation industry. At the time, California Normal Director Dale Geringer called the proposal an improvement over existing policy, stating, unlike urine tests, oral fluid tests allow for weekend off-the-job use of marijuana uh, by workers in safety-sensitive jobs. They are also far less invasive uh, of bodily privacy. Hmm. In recent months, lawmakers in several states, including California and New York, have amended their laws so that most employers may not terminate workers solely on the basis of a positive drug test for the presence of THC metabolites. So again, small little steps, yep. right? It's small. One giant step. For mankind. There it is. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> Missouri got their adult use cannabis sales a few days early. Yeah, they did. And uh, that's huge. I mean, they officially joined the adult use club early uh, the other day in the morning. A state official gave the green light to recreational sales three days ahead of schedule. Marks the fastest vote to sale time in legal cannabis history. Missouri voters approved legalization November 8, 2022. And here we are, February. Less than three months later, local residents lined up at the at the sample to goods. S sales were expected to begin on Monday, February 6th, but yesterday afternoon, state regulatory officials said they would allow adult use sales to start on Friday morning at 196 operating medical cannabis dispensaries. They already had 196 open. Like, New York had one, and it took them over a year to get their shit together. Huh. And I heard their fucking taxes there are fucking great. For cannabis. It's awesome. So good for Missouri. People are happy. They're going to get recreational weed. And if their taxes are better than Illinois, people from Kentucky, people from Iowa, people from what's next to fucking, I can't remember what's next to uh, what's west of uh, um, Missouri. Sorry. Uh, but the state next to them, <laughs> I'm stoned. What do you want me to tell that, you? Just that other state. Yeah, the other whatever state. Whatever it is. But all, all around, and even people from Illinois, if the taxes are better, Nebraska. recreational, you can go there and get weed now. Because they're going to take out-of-state residents just like Illinois has been making all their money off of all them. Right. People come from Missouri for the last two years. Out-of-state fucking pocket money was huge. So Illinois is going to lose probably about, I bet you they lose about fucking... Shit, probably about fifteen percent of their business mm -hmm. going now. People, if the, going south, going to Missouri or just in Missouri alone, St. Mm -hmm. Louis, you mm -hmm. know, 
and then you got people from Kansas going to go to fucking Kansas City to get their yep. weed now. You got fucking a big state right there that's going to grow some phenomenal weed. And you got a hundred and on top of Kentucky, isn't Paducah? Yeah, Kentucky yeah. Right there? Uh, Paducah is next to Illinois, but it is a but some, yeah, it's, it's like right there very too. Close. Yeah, so I mean, this is gonna put a hurting. One hundred ninety six already open. That's more than Illinois has, <laughs> too. So don't forget that too. <laughs> <laughs> so stupid, Illinois. You fuck, done fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> Mississippi celebrates launch of medical cannabis sales. Also, Mississippi made history when it officially began its first day of medical sales. A few Mississippi dispensaries were ready to open on customers on January 25th. Mississippi Trade Association said uh, the first customer of Brookhaven-based cannabis company was Debbie McDermott. That's good for her. So that's great. According to Mississippi Medical Association Executive Director Ken Newberg, the launch of this program has been a long time coming. Yes, it has, uh, especially because you have a college that has been studying cannabis forever. Uh, medical cannabis card holders may purchase 3.5 grams per day, six days a week, or a total of three ounces every month. All right, that's cool. Fucking good for them. Uh, Mississippi Governor Tate Reeves stalled the progress of the new medical cannabis bill in November 2021, but finally agreed to the details of the new law in January of 2022. Signed it in February. All right. So you're going, Mississippi. Good for you. And that came from high times. Uh, new weed bill. Would legalize medical cannabis bud in Iowa. Bye bye, Illinois. Because <laughs> they're seeing what you're doing. It's good. Oh my God. Uh, everybody's going to be broke. Because the only fucking thing that's going to make money here is the fucking state and fucking bazillion taxes here. It's fucking stupid. You better fix those fucking tax laws quick. Uh, but good for uh, Iowa. They need to. Our friend Paula lives out there. She needs to get weed. She's tired of coming to Illinois and paying those high taxes. Uh, Republican Congresswoman reintroduces the bill to move cannabis to Schedule 3. Should not even be on any schedule. The only schedule it should be is growing schedule. Like, how much weed can I grow this year in my own fucking home grow? So, uh, great, though. The Marijuana 1-3 to three Act would move cannabis to Schedule 3, which would have, uh, which would have several consequences. As advocates are pushing to decriminalize and completely to scheduling cannabis at the federal level, one Republican congressman is pushing to simplify downgrade cannabis from a Schedule 1 to 3, which would allow for research to move forward as a faster pace and provide several other perks. So uh, Greg Stubbe, Republican Florida, reintroduced a bill to H.R. 610. So that's cool. Uh, sign that shit. Get that done. <laughs> Quick. <laughs> like, take it off. And that came from High Times. <coughs> Uh, let's see here. Hawaii residents, um, 86 of adult Hawaii residents favor legalizing recreational cannabis. They've been fucking wanting cannabis there for years and your medical program is kind of weak. So we've been talking about them for a little bit now. Cannabis farmer markets in, in California. Uh, and then we have some stuff going on in Minnesota, the USDA hemp report and Texas outdated program. So cannabis bill moved forward to Minnesota. I think they're on their fourth now vote. How many houses do you have to go upwards in a house to get to like to the top? Do you know? I don't know. <laughs> You're asking me. Because this is the fourth. They keep on saying the fourth house vote. Why does it have to go four floors? Five floors? How many floors do you got? How many house floor votes do you get? Ten before you fucking say, go, okay? So you I just keep know. on going up a level? Uh, USDA Weekly Hemp Report. Um the Agricultural Marketing Service announced its first edition of the weekly ha National Hemp Report. Porter's free. So the USDA AMS administrator programs that create domestic and international marketing opportunities for U.S. producers of food, fiber, and specialty crops. The report contains retail advertised prices of hemp products nationally and by region. Ms. Weedman got a got an uh, article on hemp, too. Excited. Texas outdated cannabis, cannabis program. You think? <laughs> <laughs> Cannabis educa uh, education in Nevada. Good. Teach him. Teach him that it's fucking good. Good for you. Uh, let's see. Cannabis industry spending... Uh, oh, the cannabis industry spending like the most it ever spent lobbying last year. $5.43 million. And they're going to spend more this year. Okay. Here's a big one. Um... You can't get a fucking... If you have a medical card, you can't get a gun, which is your Second Amendment right to be able to have a gun in the United States. You got to get a license. You got to get your FOID card, whatever. I have not been able to buy a gun since... I, I What I have, I can keep, but I haven't been able to buy a gun since I got my med card, which is just bullshit. So there's um, 
There's a ban on cannabis users owning guns and is unconstitutional U.S. judge rules. I'm going to read this one. Uh, this is by Nate Raymond. And I found this on Yahoo News. <laughs> My. <laughs> federal law, hopefully I woke everybody up. A federal law prohibiting cannabis users from po uh, possessing firearms is unconstitutional. A federal judge in Oklahoma has concluded, citing last year's U.S. Supreme Court ruling that significantly expanded gun rights. Uh, U.S. District Judge Patrick Wierick, an appointee of former Republican President Donald Trump in Oklahoma City, on Friday dismissed an indictment against a man charged in August with violating that ban, saying it infringed his right to bear arms under the U.S. Constitution Second Amendment. Wierick said that while the government can protect the public from dangerous people possessing guns, it could not argue Jared Harrison's mere status as a use of cannabis justifies stripping him of his fundamental right to possess arms. He said using cannabis was not in of itself a violent, forceful, or threatening act and noted that Oklahoma is one of a number of states that where the cannabis is still uh, illegal under federal law but can be bought with medical use. Uh, the U.S. Department of Justice did not respond to requests for comment but is likely to appeal. The decision marked the la latest instance of court declaring a gun regulation unconstitutional after the U.S. Supreme Court's 6-3 conservative majority in June ruled that the Second Amendment protects a person's right to carry a handgun in public for self-defense. The ruling New York State Rifle and Pistol Association v. Bruce Bruin announced a new test for assuming firearm laws, saying restrictions must be consistent with the nation's, uh, nation's historical tradition of firearm regulation. So, I should be able to get a handgun if I want to buy one. Right. And they shouldn't stop me. Or anybody. So, we talked about hemp. We do. Tell us a little bit about what's going on with fucking hemp, Mrs. We Mine. Yeah. Hemp is making a comeback in the construction industry. This was an article from the BBC, and uh, Pedro Garcia is the author. Weary of his life as a computer engineer, in 2010, Elad Caspin packed his bags and traveled the world. He wanted a break from Israel, describing life in the country as complicated. I knew I didn't want to live there, in spite of having a good life with a good salary, he says. After two years of traveling, he arrived in Colos, a village in southern Portugal. He liked it so much, he decided to stay. He was not the only one. In recent years, the region has seen a wave of migrants, attracted by the dramatic, vast, and empty plains, a laid-back way of life, good weather, and cheap property. But that popularity was not generating good, stable jobs. So with the help of Palestinian investor and business partner Khalid Mansour, Mr. Caspin decided to start their company, Canamore. Their idea was to take advantage of Portugal's relaxed laws governing the cultivation of hemp. With official permits, the cultivation of cannabis and hemp has been permitted there since 2018. The laws have been refined since then, but with authorization from the General Director of Food and Veterinary Affairs, farmers can grow hemp as long as there is oversight from regulators. It marks a re revival for hemp in Portugal. It was an essential raw material for the nation's maritime expansion, which began in the 15th century, when it used to make cord, rope, and sails. Hemp fiber was prized for its durability, a quality which has caught the attention of today's construction industry. Not only is it tough, but hemp also has the potential to make big savings in carbon dioxide emissions. The plant traps carbon dioxide when cultivated and can, when made into blocks, replace concrete, which is a carbon-intensive product. According to a European Commission report, the carbon sequestering properties of hemp are remarkable. In just five months, two and a half acres of hemp can trap between 9 and 15 tons of carbon dioxide. Mr. Caspin wanted to exploit those properties by setting up his own business making hemp construction blocks. With an initial investment of $1 million, Canamore was formed at the beginning of 2021 and production began a few months later. The blocks are made of hempcrete, a mix of hemp plant parts, water, and limestone power, powder. According to Mr. Caspin, the blocks have several advantages over traditional building materials. As well as being much less carbon intensive to make, he says hemp blocks are better at insulating from heat and sound than brick and concrete. He also says that they are very resistant to fire. In 2019, researchers, 
Researchers in Australia conducted tests on hemp walls, including simulating a bushfire, and found the material very resistant very resistant to fire damage. Hello. (laughs) (laughs) However, hemp blocks have to compete with concrete, which is cheaper, stronger, and well-known to builders. The cost of hemp blocks also reflects the cost of growing hemp, which includes expensive inputs like fertilizer. In the early days, Mr. Caspin struggled to convert customers to hemp blocks. The construction construction sector is a very conservative sector with almost non-existent changes. Many architects and builders do what they have always done. It is not easy to introduce new things, he says. But after several trials, they found some customers and have been building up the business ever since. Currently, Canamore produces between 4,000 and 10,000 blocks every month, enough to build about three houses. Demand is strong, and the company has a new factory planned, which should produce about 120,000 blocks a month. So the next problem is sourcing enough hemp to feed the new factory. At the moment, Canamore buys hemp from abroad, which pushes up the cost of its blocks, and their plan is to persuade more local farmers to to cultivate the plant. There was no factory because there was no cultivation, and there was no cultivation because there was no factory. We have this opportunity and the privilege to break the cycle, Mr. Caspin says. With local materials and with larger capacity, production costs will drop significantly. In 2024, we will be able to offer our blocks at much lower prices, he predicts, even cheaper than concrete. To produce enough hemp fiber, he estimates that 1,000 hectares, or approximately 2,472 acres of hemp, will need to be cultivated. We are in talks with several farmers. We offered to buy their whole crop, and we know that there are people who want to buy not only blocks, but every hemp byproduct that we make in the new factory. He expects to be able to put to be able to tap up to 150 hectares of t- local hemp production by the end of 2023. For 2024, the target is 500 hectares. But it all d- will depend on Al- Alan Tejo's farmer's willingness to change tack towards the leafy plant. Canamore will have to compete with larger European companies such as Belgium's Isohemp. Uh, its factories, located in central Belgium, Uh, They've got a production capacity of 5 million blocks per year, enough to build around two houses a day. Dang. Unlike Canamore, it can source most of the hemp it needs locally from the north of France and the south of the Netherlands. But the two firms do share one similar challenge. The The construction sector is indeed a very traditional market and habits take time to change. The current obstacles are the lack of knowledge of the product says Charlotte D. Belafroid from Isohemp. Back in southern Portugal, Canamore is set to become one of the biggest local employers, raising its numbers of workers to 30, up from the current six who work on the production line. Marcello Guillero, Orique's mayor, tells the BBC, We weren't acquainted with hemp's potential, but we dealt with the proposal with an open mind. The local council gave Canamore the land it needs for the new factory, and Canamore has raised the money needed to build the factory, estimated at five million dollars. Good for them. But thirty, jo- yeah, thirty jobs is very significant for Oric, and Canamore will become the biggest employer in town. The mayor says we're satisfied with the recent evolution concerning cannabis in Portugal, not only in legislative terms but in terms of society acceptance. He adds. Pretty cool. Yeah, that's fucking awesome. Yeah. I want to fucking build a house with hemp like that. Those fucking blocks are fucking big. Those Mm -hmm. pictures. Mm -hmm. Damn. You'll see when we post the article, you can take a look at it. It's pretty dope. Uh, International news. Cannabis pilot program kicks off in Switzerland. Selected participants will be able to purchase weed for recreational use in Bezel, a first for Switzerland. Weed is for sale in one of the largest cities in Switzerland for the select few anyway. So that's cool. That's from High Times. Uh, what else? Germany! Legalize, legalization delayed. Tisk, tisk, tisk. You're supposed to be the biggest exporter uh, or importer of cannabis, and you're supposed to be doing some good shit, because you know what? It's f- it's because of the European Union why this is fucking happening. So, but, because they know once Germany does it, everybody's going to do it. Fast and quick. So, Hong Kong, dangerous drug. 
CBD band to begin. High times, banging it out again. Bre- beginning February 1st, CBD will be treated like a dangerous drug in Hong Kong. How is it dangerous? In a starkly different approach from the U.S. and many other places around the world, Hong Kong moved to ban CBD and categorized as a dangerous drug last October. And this, this, the ban begins on Wednesday. That's just fucking crazy. The full ban on CBD is a semi-autonomous administrative region begins within days. Uh, as of then, transporting CBD for sale, including import or export, as well as producing, processing, or consuming CBD will be illegal. People caught going to pay about... Uh, like face up to life in prison and five uh, five million Hong Kong dollars, six hundred and thirty eight thousand dollars in fines. If you're caught with possession of CBD, you can face a sentence up to seven years imprisonment in Hong Kong and one hundred twenty eight thousand dollars a million Hong Kong money. Uh, it's crazy. <laughs> it I, I, it's just crazy. Mrs. Wee Man's dying over here. So. <sighs> So even nearby in mainland China, CBD is banned in cosmetics as well as synthetic cannabinoids, which are typically made from CBD. Mm. But keep in mind that China is blamed as one of the world's more, uh, major sources of fentanyl precursors. Uh, more, uh, in China than in other parts of the world, synthetic cannabinoids are mixed with other drugs more frequently. So fucking crazy. Jackie Chan, uh, son, a Hong Kong native, served six months sentence in 2014 to 2015 for hosting a get-together with weed in the Beijing apartment. Jeez. Damn, that's nuts. Argent- did you just say this, or did I read? I read this today because I'm high, so I'm not sure. Did yes, you just say you that CBD? It. Yes. Yeah, you yeah. read it. You read it. But I, I told you I had this as one of the articles today. They're gonna CBD. It's I know. Gonna be classified. I know. Like I just heroin. read it. You I just read, read it. it. Okay. I just read I it. I told you that though. Earlier. But I read it. I read this like last <laughs> week. <laughs> the, the, I'm back. Are you back? <laughs> <laughs> this article came out January 30th. I've had it in the arsenal for a minute. Old news. It's not old I'm te- news. No, I'm just teasing. We had a lot of <laughs> we had a lot th- we had a lot of news when we did the last episode. Argentina launches cannabis regulatory agency with an eye on exports from uh, MJ Biz Daily. Um, Argentina launched a national regulatory agency for the hemp and medical cannabis industries, aiming to capitalize on the domestic and international markets. The, uh, the agency also listed its general objectives and, and introduced hemp and all its derivatives in Argentina, including for food, construction materials, textiles, and bioplastics. Amazing. Promote scientific research and cannabinoid-related technologies progress as well as promote favorable conditions for the existing industries inside the country. We're so far behind. We're going to be so fucking left behind. So stupid. Oh, my God. This is it's good for Argentina. Um... So, good for them. Another law was passed in May of 2022, the regulatory framework for the development of the medical cannabis and industrial hemp industry. That law is there. <sighs> Terrible. <laughs> Australia, shout out to our friend Terps and fucking uh, Tez down there. Tez was sending us some pictures of those fucking trucks, those diesel trucks Jeez, he works on. Louise. Jeez, those They're fucking huge. things were ginormous. Holy the scoop shit. of a truck could pick up your house. Yeah, <laughs> fucking yeah. Things were more. huge. Two houses. Those yeah. things are fucking ginormous. Thanks for sharing, Tez. Uh, Australia reports reveals potential cannabis legalization plan. A recent report has revealed Australia's plan to approach cannabis legalization within the next few years. The Australian Parliamentary Budget uh, recently released a proposal exploring two options on how to approach the cannabis legalization. It was commissioned to explore what legalization could look like through the request of Senator David Showbridge. Uh, and the Australian Greens Party. According to the PBO's reports, the first option will establish the creation of the Cannabis National Agency, C-A-N-A, which would act as the sole wholesaler between producers and retailers, set wholesale prices on cannabis, and issue licenses to potential cannabis businesses and owners. Ideally, the agency would be funded completely through the fees required to apply for production of the retail license. The second option contains all provisions from the first option, I'm glad we got that understood. Except for the final recommendation, we would change the excise tax to 15% instead of 25%. That's good. Uh, according to the New Zealand Herald, Senator Shoebridge suggested the tax revenue could be used to raise rates provided by Job Seeker, the government's job finding service, and raise financial aid provided by the Job Service Youth Allowance. 88,000 public housing units can be built in the next decade, which give more than 250,000 people a home. That's fucking dope. Why aren't we doing that here with all the money fucking these governments are making in taxes? Um, 
especially here in Illinois. Jeez. Right. Fucking fi- almost, what, $600 million they got in taxes this year? $600 million, Just one state. And we got homeless people living all over the fucking streets. That's not right. No, not right at all. You could build fucking nice fucking homes for people in, in I don't know, whatever. Commercial cultivation could be beginning in Australia as early as 2023 if the PBO plans are adopted, which would ensure the cannabis supply will be ahead of its uh, demand. Applications for production and retail license could begin as early as 2023 or 24, with an expectation of launching sales by 2024, 2025. So you're about three years away. That sucks. That's I mean, you could turn this over pretty quick. Look at Missouri. <laughs> <laughs> so high times kicking it up in Australia. I love it. Who do we like? Who who is your dad's like favorite country artist guy? Willie Nelson. Tell us about it. Yeah. He's turning 90. And he says that marijuana saved his life. A little article here by Tierney Bricker from E Online. Willie Nelson is ready to party. The country music legend is turning 90 on April 28th. And to the properly celebrate his milestone birthday, birthday, he's headlining a two-day concert in Los Angeles. Fucking A. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine being 90? Uh, the name of the concert is, long story short, Willie Nelson, 90. And it'll take place April 29th and 30th at the Hollywood Bowl. It features performances by Nelson, Casey Musgraves, Chris Stapleton, The Chicks, Sheryl Crow, Snoop Dogg, and many more artists. And before the Star Study event, Nelson is pre-gaming by releasing a new studio album he'll drop, I Don't Know a Thing About Love, on March 3rd. And the iconic singer-songwriter also teamed up with Snoop Dogg and Martha Stewart for a new Bic Easy Reach lighter campaign that gives a fiery wink to Nelson and Snoop's shared love for marijuana. Having a jam-packed schedule at 89 is fitting for the singer, who's given a lot of thought to the legacy he'll leave. When he... When asked how he wants to be remembered, Nelson told E! News, Francesca's amaker, oh, that I always showed up. I love that. Mm -hmm. I love that. Uh, I'm pretty good, he said. I've managed to keep my weight down pretty good. I don't do anything that's too bad for me. I don't drink as much as I used to. I still drink a tequila occasionally, uh, but not like I used to. As for his well-documented love of marijuana, well, it not only saved my life, it probably saved some of other people's lives, he explained. Before I smoked marijuana, I was drinking a lot, and I might have killed a lot of people, too. So I'm just glad that that didn't happen. I'm glad, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I'm glad we lived through the bad times. Prior to teaming up uh, for their Bic Easy Reach lighter commercial with Stuart, Nelson, and Snoop Dogg, uh, they had been friends for quite some time. Nelson reflecting on one of his hangouts with Snoop Dogg in Amsterdam. Oh, we had so much fun trying to outsmoke the other one, he said, going on to reveal that the two had even begun working on a song together, but he admitted, I'm not sure we ever finished it. Uh, completing that song isn't on Nelson's bucket list, though, nor is anything else for that matter. As the 10-time Grammy winner said, he doesn't have anything major left that he wants to accomplish. Oh, you know, he said, it's just one day at a time. Love it. <laughs> yeah, when you're 90, it's just like yeah, well, yeah. one day at a time, one right? One day at a time. Just live your life to the fullest one day at a time. That's right. Because you might just wake up the next day. Or not. And, or not. So I love it, right? Yeah. It's amazing. And he's still going, still playing. Still going. 89 years old, still on fucking stage, throwing it down. <laughs> Beautiful. And wrote a new song at 90. Amazing. Good for you, That's Willie cute. Nelson. We got one more last thing to talk about. We hit 100,000 downloads over the weekend. We did. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. <laughs> That's all I got to say. Thank you. <laughs> We've done this, this is just kind of a mom and pop operation and just, which most podcasts start out that way, but we haven't taken any sponsorship and advertisements. We've just been doing it. We enjoy it. It's a hobby for us that we feel like helps stomp the stigma and free the plant. And if you hop on and listen for five minutes here or five minutes there, it's at least hopefully we're a little bit entertaining Mr. Weedman puts his heart into it. I'm more of a fly-by under the radar 
I, I'm, I don't really talk a lot about what I do in my life. <laughs> <laughs> and he tells everybody about the podcast. So he puts me to shame on that. <laughs> he's, he's great. So he puts the show together and really, really, truly just wants to share everything he can about cannabis with, with everybody. So thanks for listening because those numbers for us are a big deal. It's, you know, we're just sitting here in our studio. We don't know. We really have no idea who's listening. You know, we get some feedback from, you know, people here and there. We get some consistent, hey, good job, good show. But we really don't understand how that, what that reach is. So we appreciate you, whoever you are. If you come in and listen every once in a while, like I said, come back, keep listening, and we'll keep bringing you good stories. Yeah, fuck yeah, great. Man, You, I was going to ask you guys anything else to say. I think you said enough. It that was, was perfect. My, that was my Oscar speech. I love it. That was it. That was a good speech. <laughs> I love it. I'm going to smoke my joint now. <laughs> that was, so I'd like to yeah. thank Sam. Yes. And I'd like to thank Briggs. Yes. For that fucking rose petal fucking thank you guys. cone and that fiery fucking sticky dicky icky nugs he gave me. And when you said you wanted to thank those guys, it made me think we should thank Shorty too. Oh, I can never yeah. say her name right. Shoddy. Shoddy. The producer. You're amazing. Yes, thank you, thank Shoddy. You. 100,000 downloads, Shoddy. We appreciate you we all We appreciate that every, work. every bit of it. What did you think of this when we started this thing in the basement <laughs> with she Polly? She gives us advice along the way. Yeah, she's good. Thank she's you. Good. Thank you, Shoddy. We appreciate you big time. Everybody out there in the world, we love you. Peace be with you all. Please. We need some peace in this world. Peace. Everyone needs to smoke some fucking weed. The natural disasters, the fucking earthquakes that are going on right now. 7,500 people dead. They're fighting all over the place. I pray for them, man. Just everybody going on. Holy fuck. We just need to chill. The earth's telling us something and nobody's listening. Nobody's listening. Some people are. Some people are. But the earth is talking. Okay? So... Man, like I always say, if you ain't going to take care of Mother Earth, Mother Earth ain't going to take care of us. So we all need to come together and fucking smoke some weed and get chill and fucking look out for one another. Be kind out there, man. It's fucked up. But we love you all out there. As Polly always says, smoke smart. Puff, puff, and away. Puff, puff, pass.